Hey guys, Steve here, welcome back. In this video we will purge the bottom bracket and then weld it to the C-tube. But first we need to make a change. After some tips from David and Joe Rogenbuck about the uh, C-tube wall being too thin, I thought about it some more and you guys are totally right. So I bought another C-tube. First thing we need to do is get the tube that's currently tack welded to the bottom bracket uh, off of the bottom bracket. And uh, I thought this was interesting, the tack slightly oxidized inside the bottom bracket shell. And uh, here I am using the Dremel to get the C-tube off and it turns out these tacks were not as wimpy as I originally thought they were. Here is the bottom bracket inside the vise. I actually used it to kind of hold it while I pulled the tube off. And uh, in my excitement over to the vise, I stepped on my Dremel. Okay, here's the C-tubes, uh, new one on the left and the old one on the right. The one on the left has a 1.3 millimeter wall and the old one on the right has a 0.9 millimeter wall. And then on the other side, uh, we're looking at 0.8 millimeters and 0.6 millimeters. Alright, now I'm marking where the tube is butted and where it tapers. I'm doing this because I need the seat stays welded to the C-tube where the wall is thickest. So now with it marked, I can see how much I need to cut off at the bottom. Here's the C-tube tacked to the bottom bracket and I turn it over and there's a hole. Yep. But uh, you know what? I'm kind of glad I made the hole because after making the hole, I was just a lot more relaxed and uh, I wasn't so worried I was going to mess up the tube. So it kind of just, I don't know, in a weird way put me in a comfort zone for the rest of the welding. So uh, tip of the day, if you're nervous and you're afraid you're going to mess up, just uh, just mess up. Alright, let's talk about purging. Here's what a purge setup can look like. Uh, we have a male to two female T-coupler. This gave me the ability to add another flow meter coming off the right side for purging. And here is a closer look at the T-coupler. This is the uh, bottom bracket purgeable heatsink I picked up from Paragon Machine Works and this thing is awesome. For a full list of parts, I'll have that in the video description. Other things you will need include 1 quarter inch outer diameter nylon tubing, 1 quarter inch couplers, 1 quarter inch mini ball valve, a manifold block splitter, 1 quarter inch push to connect fittings, and some 1 quarter inch pipe plugs.
Alright, so these uh, plugs I made are for the unused slots on the manifold. And here's the bottom bracket shell and you can see there's a hole there that I drilled for the down tube. Uh, I thought I should cover it up so I used some foil. This is a sheet that I found in a box. It was like a brand new sheet. Um, I hope my wife doesn't mind. I turned it into a uh, like a draft uh, curtain. I did this to reduce the turbulence that the welder fans were causing. This is a frame holder thing that I made just for welding and uh, normally people use one of those park tool bike stand things uh, but I don't own one so I used this old monitor arm that I had it was just sitting around and uh, it works really well, amazingly well. Now that I have my environment set up let's do some welding. I set my purge to around 20 CFH and uh, when I turned on the welder, I could see my draft curtain doing its magic. For my first weld, I'm laying down a short bead where the hole is. I always like to cover up the mistakes first. Be, uh, it just feels right to me than to you know start somewhere else on the tube and you know, fill the hole later or fix my mistakes later. Here is the filled hole. So in regard to purging chromoly tubing, um, some people will say you need to do it and some people will say you don't need to do it. Um, one thing I can tell you is that when you purge chromoly tubing, it does look a lot better inside. You don't see any oxidation. Uh, but structurally, I honestly don't know if it makes a difference. Uh, I'm doing it here because I just wanted to learn how to do it, uh, what's involved in purging. But uh, I think I will continue to purge. Uh, I've got the setup, so why not? One thing that does not get questioned is the use of a heatsink. So if you use a heatsink, it will reduce the distortion on the tube, um, it, in this case the bottom bracket shell. And when this frame is completely welded, I'll need to go in there and uh, re-tap the bottom bracket shell. And so if there's less distortion, then there is less wear on the tools. And uh, things like taps and ream reamers, they're quite expensive as I'm finding out. Um, I just started looking at prices for these things and wow.
Okay, we are nearly done. Uh, this took a really long time, I gotta say, because I was waiting for the tubes to cool down, and when there is a heatsink in there, the it takes a lot longer to cool because the heatsink is now like holding all the heat. Uh, so yeah, I was waiting like between welds, like anywhere from like 30 minutes to I don't know to 20 or 30 minutes. So it took almost all day to weld this thing. Alright, that's it for this video. In the next video, we will be working on the head tube, I think. And the top tube, and the down tube, and I honestly don't know which one we put on first, or... But we'll figure it out. I'll see you guys next week.